Okay, so we're going to do something different in this week's lesson, but this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about neighborhoods, different neighborhoods on the fretboard, different regions. We're going to be talking about homes that live in those neighborhoods and bus lines that you can take to connect from one neighbor to the neighborhood to the other. I know it sounds kind of corny, but it's just a real easy way to visualize and understand the, the different regions of the fretboard. And we're going to be connecting the major and the minor pentatonic scale to those neighborhoods. So for those of you that are interested in improvising, and it's not just for blues, it could be for country, it could be for rock, any style of music really, you can take these principles and apply them to that. So uh, we're gonna go through all of the lesson material in this video. If you like the extra materials, I've got the tablature, I've got the MP3 jam tracks uh, that I'm gonna be using as examples. You can get all of those things uh, by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP 471. And while you're there, check out premium membership if you're not a premium member. I have 11 years worth of in-depth lessons like this, all geared towards helping you improvise and just become a better guitar player, be able to just sit in and jam with other people. That's what the, the design of this whole site's about. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, these examples in the key of G. Uh, but the principles that you're going to learn are principles you can apply to any key. So once you understand how to do this in the key of G, you'll be able to play this in any key. So our first neighborhood that we're going to take a look at is right here. It's a G chord, but it's in the E neighborhood. And what I mean by that is, and this really goes back to the cage system. And the cage system is just a way to organize a fretboard. Uh, but we're going to be connecting scales to this and everything. So even though we're not going to be playing chords in this lesson, I want you to just know where we're at, what our neighborhood looks like. So that's our G chord using the E uh, shape or the E neighborhood, we call it that. And so if you think about playing an E chord down in first position, the first way that you learn to play an E chord usually, if you were to slide that up, bar in the third fret where the nut was, you're just replacing it with your, your bar there, you're now playing a G chord using the E shape. We're also going to be looking at the C shape and the A shape. Same chord, just different shapes, different neighborhoods. So let's get back to our E neighborhood. Now remember, that's a G chord in the E neighborhood. Now, I've, where I've got my index finger, and I use that index finger for each of these chord shapes, we're going to think of that as a fence in our neighborhood, and we're not going to go on that side of the fence. We're going to stay on this side, the side that's closest to the body. And it's going to make more sense as we get into it. The other thing we're going to do is we're not going to even bother with the bottom three strings. Now, this is always controversial when I do this because some people say, well, what about those strings? I'm telling you, just for, for brevity and just for the simplicity of trying to explain what's going on here, it makes things a lot easier and it gets you off to the races and improvising. Uh, and, and making music right away if you just start with those top three strings. This is just sort of my theory. You can, you can build on them down the road, but you can make so much music with the top three strings, especially when it comes to playing lead. I mean, most of the stuff, a lot of it comes, on those, comes from those top three strings anyway. Um, so it's going to make sense. You're just going to have to kind of bear with me. So we've got a neighborhood here. We've got a fence that we're not going to cross. We're going to stay on this side of the fence as we play these notes, and we're going to only be on the top three strings. Well, that limits things quite a bit, but that's going to be our neighborhood here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the G major pentatonic scale in this position. So it looks like this. Those five notes there, that would be your G major pentatonic scale, and you can connect them, relate them in your head to your G chord using the E shape, the E neighborhood. So those are the notes that live in that neighborhood. Now there's one note that's your home, that's your main note to know, and that would be this note. Why? Because that is your G note. Remember, we're playing this, everything we're going to be playing is in the key of G. This is a G chord, and that's your G note. It's on the first string, third fret. Just kind of know where that home note is. Always kind of keep a mental note of that when you're in a neighborhood. So, major pentatonic scale then. Now our minor pentatonic scale in the same neighborhood, using those top three strings, looks like this. So we're going to be, uh, this time we're on the first and second string, we're going to be coming up here to the sixth fret, six, three. Same thing on the second string, six, three. And then we're going to play five, three on the third string. So you can see that both our major pentatonic scale and our minor pentatonic scale have shared note, which is that G note there. 
That note lives in both of those scales. So in this neighborhood, that is a very important home to know because we're going to use that as sort of our pivot, as our anchor. Now one thing I need to just clarify here is when I played that major pentatonic scale, I played five notes, which is correct. There's five notes, penta, tonic, penta means five. When I played the, the minor pentatonic scale, I played six notes. I went like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. In actual fact, it's only five notes in the, in the minor pentatonic as well. Um, I'm just repeating one of the notes. So this note, I played twice. I just played there an octave apart. So really, if we were looking at the, the proper way to look at that minor pentatonic scale, it would be like this. One, two, three, four, five. I just threw in this note because it's a repeat, and, it, and that's a typical note you would play when you're playing in this position. So with just that information, you've got the parameters that you need to play major pentatonic scale, which gives you sort of a happy sound, minor pentatonic scale, which gives you more of a bluesy sound, and you can mix the two. They're all in the same little neighborhood here. Now one other thing I want to just mention, and I'm going to play along with a jam check to start demonstrating some of this stuff, is what are your bendable notes? People always ask that. There's lots of ways we can look at this. I'm just gonna make it super simple. These are kind of the obvious ones. When we're in that major pentatonic scale, that would be pattern two, by the way, for those of you wondering what numbers these are. That's major pentatonic scale pattern two. But your bendable note, you really got one that's the obvious one, which would be this fifth fret first string. And it's a full bend, which means you can go up two frets higher than the note you started on. So that would be your bendable note in your major pentatonic scale. Actually, you could, I would throw this one in as well. On the second string, that fifth fret, you can do a half bend because it bends into that minor, that note from your minor pentatonic. Those would be your two places that I would bend most frequently. Now, when it comes to the minor pentatonic scale, you can bend on the first string on the sixth fret or the, uh, the second string on the sixth fret or the third string on the fifth fret. Any of those, those are those would be your obvious uh, bendable notes. So that one has three. Just remember, if you're bending in that major pentatonic scale on the second string, uh, fifth fret, you're you're doing a half bend. It's not. It's like this, just going up one fret higher than where you start. Okay. We got major pentatonic scale. We got minor pentatonic scale. We've got them all in the E neighborhood, and we have our home base, which is our G note, right here. Now I realize there's another G note here and another G note down here. But remember, we're just staying on those top three strings just to keep it simple. And we're, keep, we're taking the fence there where I've got the bar where I'm playing on this side of the fence. All right, so let me put on a jam track of a G chord. This is just a simple blues shuffle. It's just gonna be a G chord repeated over and over again. We're not gonna deviate from that. We're not gonna add any other chords, but I wanna show you what you can do with just the information you've already learned. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna start off in major pentatonic scale. So I'm just walking right up that scale. Now I'm landing on that G note there, but I don't have to. I can land on any of the notes of the G chord, but for now we just have to remember that G note because it's, it's in both of our scales, our minor and major pentatonic. There's that half bend that I talked about, fifth fret, second string. You can hear how it sounds bluesy because we're bending into the minor pentatonic scale. So that's major pentatonic. Now let's listen to the minor pentatonic. You can hear the difference. Hear that? how much bluesier that sounds? Now I can keep coming back to that G note from my minor pentatonic scale or major. And it works in either situation because the G is the note from your chord. All right, so everything that I just played there was stuff that you already know. You have all the information to be able to do that. And just remember, when you're playing lead, you don't have to just stick to one or the other. You don't have to just be major pentatonic scale, for example. You can go back and forth between major or minor. And you can blend them. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna go up now to the uh, G chord using the C shape. So think of your C shape in first position, the C chord that you've learned. If you were to slide everything up 
And where the nut is, that's where our index finger ends up playing. That's the little bar there. You'd play it like this. Now that's a difficult chord for some of you, and I know some of you have, uh, have you know, struggle with playing bar chords. But don't worry, we're not playing chords in this. We're just visualizing where the chords are so that we can connect our scales to that. So that's the G chord using the C chord shape. And where my index finger is, that's the fence. And every one of these chords we're gonna learn, uh, we're gonna look at, all three of these, where my index finger is, is the fence. So we're not gonna cross that fence. We're not gonna play on this side of it. We're only gonna play on this side of it. Uh, the other thing to point out is where our home is. So remember when we played down here, our home note, that G note was here. First string on the third fret. In this case, it's on the second string. It's the same note, G, right? But this case, it's it's down here on the second fret, be eighth, uh, uh, I'm sorry, second string, eighth fret. So that's our G chord up here. Now let's connect our major pentatonic scale to that. So it looks like this. Those are gonna be our notes on those top three strings. Now I realize that's more than five notes. One of them is repeated. Um, so that's a really commonly used zone that I think of when I think of BB King. You can do a lot of the BB kind of things in that in that area. Now our minor pentatonic scale uses the same G note, but we're going to play these notes. So it's 10th fret first string down to the 8th fret, and then on the second string we've got 11, 8, and then on the third string we've got 10, 7. So that's your minor pentatonic scale for G in this neighborhood. So in our C neighborhood, we've got our major pentatonic. And then you've got your minor pentatonic. In, in the same little neighborhood there. And the one home note that sort of defines the whole thing, defines the neighborhood, in my opinion, is that note. That's our G note, just when we're looking at those top three strings. Okay, let's look at the bendable notes in this region. From our major pentatonic scale, there's really two that are kind of the obvious ones. Uh, the first one would be uh, that 10th fret second string. You could do a full bend. And then the same thing, uh, 10th fret uh, first string though. So you've got, you've got those notes. When we're on our minor pentatonic scale, you've got two bendable notes that are obvious ones. The first one is here on that 11th fret second string. And then the, the uh, other one is on the uh, 10th fret third string. So you've got... Okay, let's go down to that first neighborhood we talked about, which was our E shape, and play the G major pentatonic scale in that neighborhood. Now let's come up and play the G major pentatonic scale up in this neighborhood, which is the C shape. Right? Let's do the same thing for minor pentatonic scale. We'll come back to our, our E neighborhood, uh, and we're going to play. And then we're going to come up to this neighborhood, which is our C shape, and we're going to play. It doesn't matter which notes you start on, by the way. It doesn't matter. It's just, just get the notes. But that is your root note. So second string in this case, first string in this case. Same G note. Now there's a bus line, if we're playing minor pentatonic scale in this, uh, out of this E shape, from this note here, we can take the bus up to here, which would be the eighth fret first string, which takes you up to this G note up here. And when you're into this neighborhood, you can continue your minor pentatonic scale. So look at this. See how I went from one to region of the fretboard to the other? The real obvious place that I see tons of lead guitar players doing this is from here. That's the little bridge that gets you from this zone or this neighborhood up into this neighborhood. Your E shape up to your C shape. All right, let me share another little tip that'll come in really handy. Uh, this is uh, the, the idea of playing chromatically. So when you've got positions like this, where you've got two notes on the same string, and there's a gap in between the notes, you can play those notes in between. You just don't want to land on them. You can think of them as passing notes. So you can do that kind of thing. 
So you could do something like this. If we go into that minor pentatonic. So you, you can see that those are my two notes from the minor pentatonic, but I'm filling in the note in between. Now you don't want to do too much of that uh, because it becomes obnoxious, but it's really nice in little spots. Just don't land on any of those in between notes. That's where, that's where it's going to sound weird. Same thing, you can do the same thing down in first position. That kind of thing. All right, so we've talked about our E neighborhood. We've talked about our C neighborhood. And now we're gonna come up to the A neighborhood. Now remember, all three of these neighborhoods are a G chord, so I'm just playing a G chord in three different spots. Um, but now we're gonna be using the A shape. That's out of the cage system. That'd be like your A chord you learn in first position. If you were to slide that up, put your index finger, in this case, it would be on the 10th fret, fifth string, and I would bar, I use my pinky for this. I know a lot of people use their ring finger. 12th fret, um, and you're gonna play those middle four strings, five, four, three, and two. That would be a G chord up here. Now where I've got my bar, where I've got my index finger rather, that's the fence. Same thing with this uh, chord. So we're not gonna go on that side of the fence. We're gonna stay on this side, and we're gonna look at those top three strings. So if we start with our major pentatonic scale up here, we're gonna play 12th fret third string, and then we're gonna go 10, 12 on the second, 10, 12 on the first. That's our major pentatonic scale out of the A shape. Our root note, our home note in this chord shape is on the third string. So it's the 12th fret third string. It's also the open G, uh, G note. So you can think of it that way. So now if you think about our three different zones in this neighborhood, our root fret was on the first string. In this neighborhood, our root fret was on the second string. And up here in this neighborhood, our root fret is on the third string. So, and you've got your major pentatonic. Now your minor pentatonic, uh, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna keep our middle finger there on that 12th fret third string and we're gonna go, that's on the second string, that's 11, 13. And then on the first string, we're gonna go 10, 13. So, and this is a really common area for blues. You're gonna notice this pattern, by the way. It looks exactly like something we just learned. It's the same shape as the G major pentatonic scale when we played it here over that C shape in the C neighborhood. Right? But when you play it up here, three frets higher, it's minor pentatonic scale. All right, so now that we have our three neighborhoods defined, we have our major pentatonic scale, our minor pentatonic scale, and that home note in each of those neighborhoods. Let me play a jam track that not only has just a G chord now, it's gonna have a G, C, and a D chord. It's gonna be a one, four, five, a blues shuffle, 12 bar blues in the key of G. And I wanna show you that even though there's other chords going on, we can stay in the key of the song. And that's the one thing I love about playing in, these, uh, in the pentatonics is it allows you to just stay in the key of the song. You don't necessarily have to worry about following the chord changes so much. As long as I'm playing any of those notes that I just showed you, major pentatonic or minor pentatonic, it's gonna work. Now that only works if the song is in a major key. If the song's in a minor key, you can only play minor pentatonic. If we're thinking pentatonics, the major pentatonic would not work if the song was in a minor key. But if it's in a major key, you can play either one. Let me demonstrate. Okay, so we got the jam track playing, we got a G chord. I'm just gonna make this up. We're gonna start in major pentatonic down here in neighborhood E. Right? Now I could go into minor at any point if I want. Just hitting that one note, minor pentatonic note. Let's take the bus up to this neighborhood. All right. There was the chromatic note that I showed you. Now I'm playing major pentatonic right here. I can easily switch to minor though, keeping my finger on that root note, which is our G note by coming up into the minor pentatonic scale. See how I can talk over this? I don't even have to really worry about where, I, where the song is. That's the beauty of being able to improvise once you understand this stuff. 
Let's come up into the A shape, the A neighborhood. This is a real common thing that you hear in blues. You hear this in country. That kind of thing. I'm just playing the top part of that. And then back down here. Let's wrap it up. Now I kind of screwed up and cheated on that last note by playing this note because that's actually out of the top three strings there. So I, other than that, everything was what we talked about. But I wanted to make the point that I've got these three neighborhoods and I can go back and forth between them. I can take the bus from one to the other. I can go from, from this one to this one via a bus line. The other bus line that I have that I, that I used, and I didn't really mention that, was uh, when I'm up in... The major pentatonic scale in uh, the C neighborhood, I can take the bus up into this neighborhood, which would be your out of your A shape. That's what was going on there. And it's still major pentatonic scale, but I'm just switching uh, into a new neighborhood. All right, the last point I want to make, and I'm going to be very brief on this, I want to play a jam track that has a minor chord in it, just to show you that it doesn't always have to be a one, four, five major chord blues thing. You can work this stuff into other songs as well. Okay, here are the chords. G goes to E minor, which is relative minor, and then to the fourth chord, which is a C. And just repeats these four, or these three chords. But I can take the same principles and apply them to this. Right? I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just singing with my fingers using these very simple parameters. I get a little off track there because I was tempted to go down to the uh, fourth string again. But but anyway, that's my point, is that even in a song that's, that's got a mix of major chords, minor chords, you can still take the same principles. You can still take the same philosophy of just staying in the key of the song. You're not trying to follow the chords. I wasn't trying to play the E minor chord in that situation. I was just taking the major and the minor pentatonic scale in those three neighborhoods, and I was bouncing back and forth between them, playing what I heard and playing what I felt. And that's what I love about playing in the key. You don't have to, you can take your head out of it a little bit. And it's almost more like singing. It's, you can express yourself a little better in that way. Now remember, as a premium member, I have some of what we've talked about in this video tabbed out for you. So for those of you that want to get in and learn a very specific solo exactly the way I played it, I've tabbed that out. And you also have the MP3 jam tracks. I put all three of them up there. The song in just the with just the G chord, the, the G, C, and D, which is the 145, and then the last one that we just looked at with the minor chord. So that you can practice taking everything that we talked about and start to just play and express yourself. I hope you'll do that and I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. All right, we'll see you next week for something new.